You'll find the studs behind your wall, which are positioned 16 inches on center, and screw into your strong back, into the wall for a nice, secure attachment. Once that's attached, we're ready to put our top on. We've made our top out of solid oak. We've rounded off the top and the backsplash. We've cut a hole for our sink, and we were very carefully attached the backsplash. We used some caulk in here. The next step is to actually screw it into place. We have these little blocks here. Put a screw up through, four screws in it, and it's nice and secure. Great. Now, there are lots of different ways to go with countertops, and it's a personal choice. You may want to make your own using ceramic tile, make your own plastic laminate, or buy a ready-made plastic laminate countertop. Now that you've completed your vanity project, you may be ready to consider something a little more ambitious, perhaps some kitchen cabinets. You've been able to see that building your own cabinets really isn't as difficult as you might have thought it was. We hope we've given you that extra bit of confidence you need to start your own woodworking projects, including cabinets like these. The basic construction techniques that we showed you for building our bathroom vanity are the same for building this kitchen. See right here? We have a face frame connected to the carcass, and then the doors are solid oak that are butt jointed. You may want to get some additional information about installing countertops, doing your plumbing connections, and how to put multiple cabinets together. But we've taught you the basics that you need to build your own cabinets. I'm Les Sizek. And I'm Avian Rogers. Thanks for watching. Okay, now, it's essential that you keep a safe shop. That's just part of the job. Now, we can't go through every safety guideline for every shop, but let's go through some important safety guidelines. All right, first of all, keep your shop neat and tidy. It's not only good for safety, but it'll do wonders for your sense of organization. Then get yourself ready. See, now I need to remove my watch. If you're wearing a ring or bracelet or necklace, remove those. And don't wear loose-fitting clothes. Wear short sleeves, or if you wear long sleeves, pull them up over your elbows, like I'm doing here. If you've got long hair, tie it back. Now, I don't have much of a problem with that. And wear non-slip footwear. Now, when you get ready to use a power tool, put on safety goggles or safety glasses and wear a dust mask, unless you have a dust collection system like we do. You may also want to wear ear protection. Now, onto the table saw. You're going to be using it a lot in the building process. It's a fantastically useful tool, but it's very powerful. So in order to avoid accidents, you want to be using it correctly. So let's get to know it better. Always be sure you're conscious of where your hands are in relation to the blade. Now, this is obviously the blade. This unit right here is called a miter gauge, and it's used for cross-cutting. We won't be using it right now. This piece right here is called a ripping fence, and it can be slid in and out to cut varying widths from very narrow to fairly wide. Now, as an example of how we set the ripping fence, we did set it for 14 inches. Now, the way we do that is we measure from the fence over to the inside of the blade. You see that at 14. And then we check it at the front and the back using one of these miter gauge slots as a reference point. Okay, the reason why we measure from the fence to the inside of the blade is the blade will cut away an eighth of an inch, and we want to get an accurate 14 inches. So to make our cut, pull the safety guard down, put on my safety goggles, set my wood on the table, and turn the machine on. Make sure your blade is sharp. If you find that you're having to force your wood through the blade, it probably means it's dull. Now, that can be a safety hazard. And not only that, it can create ugly black marks along the side of your wood, which are difficult to sand away. And it puts an unnecessary strain on the tool's motor. So if you've got a dull blade, have it sharpened. 
The other thing we want to point out is make sure that you unplug the saw before you change your blades. So I'm going to cross cut this piece right now. Nice cut. Oh, thanks, Les. Say, so, we have some other pieces of safety equipment. I think we ought to give the folks at home a real close look at these. I agree. Why don't you demonstrate? I'll leave these behind. Okay, great. The first thing I want to show you is the push block and the feather board. And these are used for ripping cuts. So we're not going to need our miter gauge for this. Now, I'm going to put my safety glasses on first. Get my regular glasses put away and set up the old rip fence here. Yep. Now we're going to rip a small amount off uh, this board here. That looks like a good place to set the fence. Lock it down, real easy to use, and we'll set this feather board right in the miter gauge slot. And you can see this has flexible fingers that will put a gentle pressure against this board and hold it real tight against the uh, rip fence so I don't have to worry about that when I'm making my cut. Slides right in there like that. And I set this up just in front of the blade. I don't want it to be opposite the blade. I want it to be just in front of the blade. Now with a push block, I'm all set to go. Now we're going to make a much narrower cut, and the space between the blade and the fence will not allow us to use the push block. So the perfect tool for that is this push stick. Very safe, will give us a nice clean run through the saw. And you can see the little notch in here is designed to catch the back of the board and push it right through the blade. And it's uh, angled so that my hand is going to be well above the blade. Very safe instrument to use. Now let's see how this works. Now let's say we want to cut this piece in half. Obviously, the space between the blade and the fence is going to be too narrow to use the push stick. So how will we do that? The handy-dandy fence straddler. This is a device that slips right over the fence and is designed to catch with this little notch here. It'll catch the back of the board as we push it right along through the fence and through the blade. Now, for this cut, I will need to readjust the fence here. And you can see that we're getting uh, now the uh, rib fence is very close to the blade. We'll also need to readjust our uh, feather board. Bring that right in close. Tighten it up a little bit. Now we're ready to go with the fence straddler. On a long piece like this, I'll just set my front staff straddler here, and as soon as the back of the board gets up to that little notch, that comes into play. I'll show you how it works. Okay, and we're going to wait till the saw blade can come to a complete stop before we take this piece of scrap out of there. All right, now, we can't possibly show you every safety uh, consideration there is, but we do want to raise your awareness to safety itself, and I think we've done that. One thing that's essential is that before you operate any piece of power equipment, you read the manufacturer's instructions about safety and how to operate that equipment, and you also use all the safety equipment that the manufacturer supplies. That's absolutely essential. We want you to enjoy your time in the shop, and the best way to do that is to use common sense and follow the manufacturer's instructions.